right into our vehicle and we start the race. As you can see there in the upper left, we have our positioning. Uh -oh. Getting off the track already a little bit. Oh, shucks. Come on. Come on. Don't do that to me now. Well, this is starting fucking fantastic. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name is Shoebird, and this is the first ever episode in my Throwback Thursday series where I'm going to be taking you through a list of my personal classic games. Being that it is the first episode, we will start off with the first game I ever actually purchased for myself on PC. And as you can see here on the title screen, that is Soda Off-Road Racing. Now, I know it's a bit confusing because the logo over here says Short Course Off-Road Drivers Association, or SODA, which was a driver's association from about the 1970s to the 1990s-ish, and it kind of exists in some form as part of Traxxas and whatnot. You know, these driver's associations, that they can kind of merge, they can... You fall apart, be picked up by somebody else, etc., etc. It's a lot like a gaming company that way. It can go a lot of different ways. And down here it says World Series of Off-Road Racing. However, if you look at the the uh, CD case, you know, the jewel artwork, and there's even a booklet that came with this game. Let me grab it here. This is the booklet that came with the game. Over 100 pages, 112 to be exact, of important information about this game. Which is pretty cool. You don't get that kind of stuff today when you just download a game off of Steam, Origin, Battle.net. I won't even mention Epic because Fortnite is gross. <laughs> oh, there, I just made some enemies. Uh, <laughs> anywho, this... this uh, Game on the artwork is just called Soda Off-Road Racing. So if you're looking for it online anywhere, I don't know if it's on like good old games or anything like that, just look for Soda Off-Road Racing. The game itself was created by Sierra, or Sierra Online, I think is what it was called. Uh, it was also, I'm never sure when you talk about publishers versus game developers, versus everything else. Uh, the um, the trademark is for Software Allies. Here, let me see. Had to turn on another light. Yep, it was copyrighted in 1997 by Software Allies Incorporated. Um, published by Sierra Online Inc. and Papyrus Design Group. Or Papyrus. It is a registered trademark of Short Course Off-Road Drivers Association. So this game is old. <laughs> I mean, 1997, as of right now, that's a long time ago for some people. Some people weren't even born yet. A lot of people weren't even born yet. Jeez, that's scary. I'll go into a little bit about how I got to this game once we get into the actual racing and everything. Uh, for now, I just want to take you through a little bit of what the options and everything look like. Uh, I'll tell you about the single races, and then we can get into starting a series. If we take a look here down at the options, we got a resolution of 320 by 240 or 640 by 480. That's just how old this game is. I mean, you're talking Windows 95, maybe Windows 98? Since the copyright date is 97, I don't know when the actual release date was right now. But I'm guessing Windows 95, and you didn't get much higher than that. Uh, you get different ground textures and everything else you can change. You can turn a map on or off that appears during the race. And at the time, you could even set your minimum and your maximum frames per second. Down here in the single race options, uh, you can change the number of laps that you race the number of opponents, uh, their strength, which is interesting because 20 is like kind of in the, you know, 25 is supposed to be in the middle, but I still struggle with that. 
one is like super easy and 50 is super hard. They they take off faster than you can. Everything they do is better. And down here, you can also change your starting position. When we get to the general, once I click on this, it's going to be kind of noisy, but I'll talk you through everything. Okay, up here we got your units. You can change your kilometers an hour, miles per hour, or whatever. Damage on or off, music on or off. This only plays if you have the CD in the drive, and I do not. Uh, you can change your music volume, which is funny because that just changes the overall volume. Engine volume, effects volume, and radio volume. If you're wondering what the radio is, that is your spotter, so it sounds like this. And he talks like that, he chimes in like that a lot. It gets very annoying. And you can also save your replays. It saves back two minutes or eight minutes, which is pretty interesting. Uh, then you have controls down here. Steer left, right, accelerate. You might see that it says left, and then brake, it says up. This game still functions with modern controllers. And what I mean by that is, right now I have my Logitech G29 plugged in to play this game. So if I were to, say, hit the clutch instead of the brake, instead of the brake, it changes it. You see that? It still works with the modern controllers, or vice versa. The modern controllers still work with this game. I'm not up on like how the technology of the controllers works. I don't know if it's any different than what the controllers used back then, what any sort of steering wheels that were around or available at the time, what they might have used. But it's pretty cool that our modern equipment, 2016, 2018, whatever. Uh, trying to think of when I bought this Logitech wheel. <laughs> it's it's interesting that our modern equipment works with it. I have also had the Thrustmaster plugged in and tested it out with that. It does work with the Thrustmaster TMX wheel and pedals. Uh, you get an upshift, downshift. Unfortunately for the Logitech, it does not detect the paddles on the back. It just detects the button presses, the X square triangle circle. On the Thrustmaster, it actually does detect those two buttons because they are button one and two. So that's very interesting, but I'm not very good at paddle shifting anyways, so I usually stick to automatic. <laughs> I know that's a dirty word in the racing world. And then over here, you have keyboard controls that you can press while you're in the game to change the details and stuff. And then this interesting one, number six, changing or toggling the telemetry. Uh, for the longest time as a kid, I mean, I'll talk about it in the race, but I did not know what the heck that word meant. And boy, when I found out, it changed everything. <laughs> Oh, it seems silly, but it, it changed everything. If you click on the series race up here at the top, you're greeted by this vehicle selection screen in which you can select a 2x4 800 horsepower truck, stadium truck, a 2x4 150 horsepower uh, buggy, or a 4x4 800 horsepower uh, suburban bronco whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Basically a 4x4 is all I'm going to call it. And over here you have several paint options. There's Trailmaster, K&N, BF Goodrich, Dynomax, Ford, and then KC. Now, I have witnessed other YouTube videos where somebody is playing this game and they have like a Bud Light truck. I don't, I'm not sure how they got that into the game, how they modified it, but if I figure it out, maybe I'll give that a try. Uh, and then down here, you can look, there's a couple wrenches. You can change some settings around, but you can do that on the next screen as well. So I'll explain that in just a moment. 
Then once we go to the select track scene, scene, screen, once we get to the select track screen, over here you have your track selection, but first you have your environment selection. There's country, desert, and tropics, and each one has four default tracks. And now you'll notice the date they were generated, of course. There's just a slight variation there, but they are all by Software Allies. And the reason this shows up, and the reason that this shows up over here, this slider that is not functioning right now because the list is short, is because this game actually shipped out with a map generator, a track generator, which is part of what is described in this lengthy owner's manual over here. It's pretty cool. However, it doesn't work very well on modern systems because I think our speeds are just too fast for it. Uh, if you press a button to create a bump or a divot, it shoots to the limit. <laughs> so you're trying to create a little bump on the track and you just press the button just for a brief second, just, just for a brief little tap and it skyrockets. And so it's pretty much impossible at this point in time to use, unfortunately. It was pretty cool at the time because you could create a track and then you could hit learn, which took forever. And the AI would actually learn the track and then you could race against them on it. And at that point, it would show the date you generated it and your name, et cetera, et cetera. Once you select a track, you can click down here and you can change several options. You can turn a G-Force analyzer on or off. You can switch to automatic or manual, switch your tire tread, change your horsepower, change your suspension, which as you can see is not nearly as convenient and easy as it was in Wreckfest yesterday. And you can change your gearing, which again, not nearly as easy as it was in Wreckfest. Uh, this manual over here, this nice handy dandy manual, does explain how to do a lot of this. I still don't get it. I'm not the biggest actual car guy. I'm, I love, I love racing games, man. I love racing games, but if you want to talk to me about your camber or your spring stiffness or whatever, I'm, I'm not going to understand it. I'm not going to follow down here, you can do a time trial. So if you do change some things around, you can take that for a test spin before you hop into the actual race. As I have done with every other game I've played so far, I would like to take you through the beginning of a series of races, starting a new career. So if I hit this little create button, you'll see the name pops up. I'm Shoebird, that's me. And then we can select our laps per race. I have the damage model on, so what I like to do is make it super interesting and go 10 laps. Plus, I've found that this provides some pretty good recording time on a single race. When we get to this screen here, again, we can select our vehicle type and our paint job. My favorite has always been the buggies but you know I think well let's let's go with the trucks today let's start with the trucks if you want to see buggies or you want to see a career over here in the 4x4s go ahead and comment below let me know but I'm going to pick a truck today I can always do a buggy another day and then for the paint jobs, my favorite for some reason has always been this one. I mean, it's simple, it's realistic. You know, this one looks cool, especially at the time. I mean, on a 4x3 monitor and with no real terrible pixelation like you might be seeing. Well, it's all pixelated, but the anti aliasing was not an issue. Uh, anything like that, it looked pretty cool, but. My favorite has always been the Ford with this little strip through here and everything else. 
So when I click on that, it takes us over here to our main standings and stats page. You see we get 12 races, so we go through each each environment and um, each environment, each track. Then over here, after we're done with the series or we're done with a season, we get awarded an upgrade. Now, this has been true for when I have won a series, but to be honest, I've only raced two series, two seasons to fruition, and I've won both of those. So I'm not sure if, like, if I get third, if I still get an award. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not positive on that. You can see here when we start off, we cannot select anymore what track we race on. Basically, it goes on a track here in the country, and then a track in the desert, and then a track in the tropics. And then it comes back to the country. And it kind of jumps back and forth. It doesn't go straight down this list. So it gives us a little bit of variety there. But I do believe pretty much every season is the same. Our first track, then, is Cliffs of Fear. And you can see here, uh, it's mostly dirt, but there is a good section of mud here. And for that reason, actually for the dirt, I mean, I go here and I keep my tire tread at medium. If it's really muddy, you want it to be on deep. If it's gravel, you want it to be on shallow. I keep it at medium. And like I said, I don't know what I'm doing in this realm. I'm not, you know, I'm a driver, not a pit crew manager. <laughs> I'm not a part of the pit crew. And I know in real life, the drivers do know something about the car so they can tell the pit crew, hey, I need you to do this to the front shocks. You know, I need you to loosen them up, tighten them up, whatever. I'm just, I'm not that good. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll turn the G-Force Analyzer on just so you can see what that looks like. And for me, personally, I like to just jump into the race. I don't even do time trials anymore. I've played these tracks so many times, it's just pointless for me to waste my time. Ah, get it? Time trial? Pointless for me to waste my time? Alright, whatever. Let's get to it. Once we click that, it takes us down here to this. Right into our vehicle and we start the race. As you can see there in the upper left, we have our positioning. Uh oh getting off the track already a little bit. Oh, shucks. Come on. Come on. Don't do that to me now. Well, this is starting fucking fantastic. <laughs> As you can see here, we're not doing so uh, hot. Let me get, get the uh, juices flowing. In the upper left, we have our positioning, which shows that we are in terrible shape to start this race. Then next to that, you have your damage icon, which shows that we took a little bit there in that initial start as we got bumped around quite a bit. Uh, up above us, we have a mirror that we can toggle on or off and in the upper right you have your lap time which is a nice indicator of how well you're doing once you go through a certain lap the time will be static up there and I'll show you what that looks like as we go through the finish line here to the left we have the ugly map it's just a black line that kind of shows you the general layout of the track and on that map, you can see there's green, yellow, and red dots for first, second, third place. Everybody else is white. And your icon is always the largest one. So if you're ever confused as to where you are, just look for the larger dot. In the middle of the screen, as we go through a checkpoint, you can see it shows us our positioning and how far behind we are. Or, if we're in first place, it shows us how far ahead we are. And then, how far ahead or behind we are of our best lap time. If we had the 
announcer, not announcer, excuse me, if we had the spotter turned on, this is when he would chime in almost every single time and go, you're in fifth place by 0.3 seconds. <laughs> it gets old because it does it every single checkpoint. And then on top of that, he will chime in if somebody is up next to you and sort of at your back quarter panel, he might say, Ksh, he's on your left. Ksh. And if I'm trying to talk to you, it gets a little old to hear that. Even if you're racing just by yourself, it gets old to hear that every five seconds or so. <laughs> Underneath the map over there, you can see we have our G-Force analyzer. If I even understood half of what that meant, I might be able to utilize it. However, I, even with the description in the manual over here, I'm still not quite sure what it is I'm looking at. For experienced racers and maybe even fans of like pilot simulation and you know plane simulators and stuff, they might understand that a little better than me. Oh, shoot. But for me, I'm just not quite sure. Down in the lower left, your gear is visible. What gear you're in, if you are using a manual transmission. And in the lower right is your position. Or, excuse me, your lap time. If you noticed back there, this game had one major flaw that gets kind of annoying. If you get off the track, it pulls you and it slows you down. So if I get my tires off the track a little bit, it's about like driving down a highway and letting your tires get onto the gravel shoulder. It wants to pull you off and it wants to slow you down. Now sometimes you don't even have to be on the visual edge of the track. You can still be in the grass, dirt, mud, gravel, whatever and it will still pull you off. It's like the edge is, I don't know, it, it's like the detail of the track is not, or excuse me, is way overlapping the edge. If you watched any of my previous videos so far, uh, the one thing you might have picked up on is that I've stated I like to game in the first person. I'm not a fan of third person games unless it's like something really amazing. Like I think GTA 4 is one of the best Grand Theft Auto games that may get some ire, but I like it a lot. And that's a third-person game, and I'm fine with that game. But if there is a first-person option, I usually stick to that. However, this game, it does have several different camera modes, as you might have been able to see in the beginning. So if I hit the button, I'll do it down the, uh, down the main front stretch here. If I hit the button, you can see there is an arcade view, which is kind of terrible when you're cornering and stuff. There's a heli cam, which is a little bit better. It gives you a little more perspective, but it kind of puts you really far away. There is a very useless TV cam, and then there's a bumper cam, which it takes forever to get into. And then if we come back, there is a cockpit camera. Now there were options back in the day for some different things you could do with this camera. I could, for instance, zoom it ahead, push it ahead, push it back, roll it left, roll it right. If I do that today though, as I stated with the track editor, it is like our keyboards or something are too fast for the programming. So, I'm not going to do it now because I'm about to pass this guy. But, 
if I go ahead and hit the button to, I think this is going to bring me backwards, I can't remember which one's which, if I hit Z over here, it pushes me ahead, but you can see how fast it works. You can see just how fast it does it, and it's kind of disorienting. If I hit K, it's supposed to put me back to the regular spot, and I think if I switch my camera up, it if I switch my camera around, it's going to reset it as well. In fact, let me try that real quick. There we go. When I took you through the options, as I stated, there was one that I was never fully, I never fully understood, and that was telemetry. I didn't understand what that meant. Well, it took another game, probably Project Cars or something, I don't know. It took another game for me to understand exactly what they're talking about when they use the word telemetry. Well, if I hit six, it turns all of that off and you get a much better view of what's going on on the track, what's going on in front of you. It's a lot easier to concentrate on the actual racing and it's a lot more fun that way. It's just, <laughs> it's much more immersive, although it's a grainy old pixelated game and it's a lot easier too. Although I started with the trucks and not the buggies, so it's giving me a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this game being you know, produced in 1997 and still working with the modern day racing wheels, uh, you don't get an understanding for just how difficult this game was as a kid. I mean, you could, basically you had two options, or I did anyways. I had two options. I had the keyboard, which if you use the keyboard to steer, it turns super slow. It's trying to be like this, like realistic, but it's very difficult because it turns super slow. Or we had a little game pad with just a D-pad on it, and that whips left and right. Like it whips to the 90 degrees, and that becomes super difficult because if you're trying to get around some of these corners, you got to basically tap left and right all the time. The same thing goes for the braking or the accelerating. You don't have the variety you do with a pedal. You know, you don't have the range, I guess, of motion. It's basically on or off. So there's a lot of times as a kid where I spun out and just would get pissed and restart, which is why I never really did the series races because you can't restart a series race. Very quickly here in the waning moments of this race, I'll explain that I got this game, uh, let's see, I was in, I think, fifth grade. We used to get these book order forms, I think from Scholastic, and basically the teacher would bring them in, and you would you know, look at what you want, circle what you want, bring it home, show it to your parents, ask them, you know, can I get this book? Can I get that book? And at the back, they always had video games, and I would just look at them like real jealous. And finally one day I saw this racing game, and I knew from arcade games and stuff that I liked racing. So I took the chance, asked my parents. Somehow they let me get it. I'm sure they were a little... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they regretted their their decision a little later as I swore and, and got mad and hit things and <laughs> stuff like that. But, but they let me get the game and 
you know, I couldn't be more happy that they did because it was a ton of fun growing up to play this game. And it's still great to be able to play it today with a <laughs> with a legit racing wheel and to be able to show the game off to you. When we get done with the race, you can see here we have the ability to put in our name for the record. As I was doing previously when I was testing this game out earlier this year, I put in the date that I beat the race. However, I think for the sake of this video, or this, well, this video, and then I might just do like a racing series with this. I might do that. That'd be kind of fun. I don't think I've witnessed any others on YouTube doing it. I've seen individual races, but I don't know about a whole series. So we'll try that out. But anyways, for the sake of that, I think I will title it like what season I am in. Like that. Season 1, Season 2, Season 3. I better make sure I can do double digits. Okay. I think there's a limit to... Oh, you can go out that far. So we'll go Season 1. We'll clear that. Then it shows you the standings once again. It has your race results here and then your overall results. It tells you how many races you have left. And if we click this little check mark, it brings us to the next race, which will be in the desert, in Desert Treat. Now, I always think this thing kind of looked like a mouse from this angle. Kind of looked like Mickey Mouse or something. But when you get into it and you look at the map, it kind of looks like a fox. It's kind of weird. And the treat on this track is there's a nice little drop-off over here in this area. Thank you for watching this video to begin with. And, uh... You know, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, comment below, etc., etc., what everybody else says on YouTube. And I'll see you in Desert Treat.